Now coming to treatment of CPT. What are the aims of treatment in CPT? We have to straighten the anterolateral bowing of tibia, obtain and maintain the union of pseudoarthrosis in tibia, obtain the union of fibula and prevent the proximal migration and associated ankle valgus issues. What are the principles of treatment to achieve these aims? So basic treatment principles include hematomatous tissue or abnormal periosteum excision, alignment of leg to be maintained along with permanent intramedullary fixation to provide internal bracing so that the chances of refracture are avoided. Treatment options in CPT include prophylactic which includes bracing, the clamshell type of bracing which is circumferential bracing holding the whole leg together or prophylactic bone or prophylactic bone grafting of classical McFarlane type. Definitive treatment includes treatment of uh, pseudoarthrosis and achievement of uh, union by hematoma excision and various modalities of fixation after copious amount of bone grafting. Finally, salvage can be option sometimes which includes amputation. What are prophylactic options of treatment in CPT? Bracing. This is to prevent the fracture if possible. So, clamshell type of uh, brace is uh, generally recommended. The protection should be generally continued till the skeletal maturity. So, what is the role of brace or prophylactic braces in the frank pseudoarthrosis? So, if the child is very young or there is early fracture, uh, for example, less than 4 year old, bracing can help to allow further growth while definitive surgery is being planned and uh, deferred. Patient is mobilized in well molded circumferential clamshell brace. McFarlane type of a bypass bone grafting can often be uh, used in pre-fracture CPT. Disadvantage is that the normal leg is disrupted to have a lot of bone graft. The deformity is not corrected. Remember this is just a bypass grafting and we are trying to prevent the fracture from happening here. It is not recommended for established pseudoarthrosis or the most common form of CPT where there is frank non-union of the tibia. And these days, this is more of a historical value. After prophylactic form of treatment comes the definitive surgery. The most pertinent question is timing of surgery. When to do the surgery? There is no consensus on the timing of surgery. Generally, it should not be attempted before two years, ideally after four years of surgery. Why are we trying to delay the first attempt of surgery? This is to allow the growth of tibia and fibula, to facilitate better internal fixation and to allow the increased availability of autogenous bone graft. Prerequisite is that patient is functional on brace and it is mobilized and it is not suffering the tissue atrophy. Definitive treatment includes hematoma excision and bone grafting along with various modalities of fixation which may include intramedullary fixation with various nailing methods, fixator with distraction histogenesis, vascularized fibular graft, Huntington procedure that is the tibialization of fibula and Langenshield procedures. The most commonly used procedure is 4-in-1 osteosynthesis which was described by Joey et al and, and later modified by Pele et al. So in the step 1 it includes meticulous and wide resection of fibrous hematoma, reopening of medullary canal. Step 2 includes intramedullary laning. Various forms of intramedullary devices can be used including the Steenman pin, rust rod, telescoping rods or Williams rod or FD rods. In the chapter on osteogenesis imperfecta or OGI, we have described the principles of telescoping or growing rods and we recommend students to go through that lecture also. Then comes the bony fixation part. Many surgeons use Ilijaro or external fixators to achieve the acute compression at the fracture site and to have the rotational stability because the intramedullary device may not have the rotational stability. Can also be used for lengthening if required. Some author use locking plates for this purpose that is to achieve the rotational stability. Step 4 involves the generous bone grafting, the most important step. Rectangular corticocanceless graft may be taken from the inner table of ileum and this is placed along the posterior browser of tibia and fibula. So here the fibula, here is tibia, 
this corticocancellous graft on fibula is placed in the posterior aspect spanning whole tibia and fibula then copious amount of cancellous bone graft is placed in this area whole this area is filled because we are trying to achieve cross union here another layer of cortical bone graft is placed anteriorly here 